My guest today is Professor Jane Hocking, who is an epidemiologist here at the University of Melbourne, specialising in sexual health and behaviour. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Now, you've co-authored along with about a million other people. <laughs> just a few. Uh, just a few. A uh, uh, paper for us on chlamydia and the success or otherwise of screening for chlamydia in certain age groups. Um, the guidelines say every sexually active 16 to 29 year old should get tested every year. That's right. Is that happening? Look, um, we're testing, currently testing about 12 to 13 percent of people within that, within that age group. And this study was conducted in part of a larger trial where we've been looking at how we can make it easier for GPs to increase their testing rates in general practice. Yeah. And we have been able to get their testing rate up into the, the low 20s percents, which is, so we've more than doubled it, yeah. essentially. But one of the issues that we did find in doing this, when we had a closer look at the data, we noticed that about 20% of the time, so about one in five people for whom the GP had ordered a test, the patient wasn't following through and having the test. Right. So the GP was doing following the guidelines, but something was stopping the patient from going through and having a test. So we decided to have a bit more of a closer look at that. So, okay. The GP's doing all the right things. Yep. The patient presumably is not. Yeah, so there's something stopping the patient from following through and having the test. And yep. so our study was set up so that we could collect some data on the patient and the clinic and the area for us to see if there was anything showing up in that data that was able to characterise these patients a bit more clearly. And what were the big barriers? Well, we found a couple of factors. One, we found that men in that 16 to 29 year age group were about 40% less likely to have a test than women mm -hmm. when it was re required. We found that those aged 16 to 19 what might have been less likely to have a test. We also found in areas where there was increasing socio-economic disadvantage, so poorer areas, because mm -hmm. a lot of this was conducted in rural Australia, yep. that, um, that they were less likely to follow through and have a test. And from more of a structural um, uh, basis, we found that those clinics that did not allow for pathology collection on site, right. those patients, patients attending those clinics were less likely to have a test when the GP ordered it. So basically, if it's so convenient that they can't really avoid it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they'll do it. Yeah, essentially, yes. Okay. If 16 to 19 year olds are less likely to follow through, yep. and poorer people are less likely yep. to follow through, aren't they the two really high risk groups yep, for chlamydia? that's spot on. Those are the two key risk factors for chlamydia. So while GPs are doing their best to try and test them, something within this really at-risk group for chlamydia is failing. And yeah. so we need to, to think about what we can do to, to remove some of these barriers and to also understand a bit more about why these people are not following through and having a test. Presumably embarrassment is part of that. Yeah, I think there's probably I think it's probably multifactorial. I think you know, if a patient's rocking up to see their GP for a, a sore throat or something or other and the GP says, let's do a chlamydia test, there might not always be the time for the GP to thoroughly explain it to the person. Right. The patients might not have as good an understanding about it. And so that's possibly that lack of knowledge might stop them from having a test. Is there a stigma with that as well? Yeah, quite possibly too. Fear of having a positive test, yeah. not understanding what's involved in a, having a chlamydia test. And, you know, one of the things that we didn't investigate on this was whether or not people understood about the cost charging implications of a test. So right. fear of knowing whether or not I'm going to get stung for a big expense or not might have um, put, some of them, put some of them off. And I think... Being, you know, if you require a patient, if the doctor writes the, the request form, gives it to the patient, says so duck off to the pathology and have the test. If you're 16, 17 year old and they've got to walk out of their building and walk a couple of blocks down to find the pathology collection centre, that's going to be a real disincentive. Yeah. So, um, you know, most pathology areas do provide some courier services. So yeah. I think that making those services available would probably definitely help. Do you have any solutions in mind? I mean, I know it's a pretty broad brush. Obviously, build GP surgeries with a pathology lab. But... Well, not necessarily have a pathology lab on site, but just allow them to leave specimens. Right. Um, if there was some way that they could, you know, incorporate into, you know, the GP gives the patient the urine plot, possibly in a 
covered bag or so it doesn't look so obvious <laughs> just that sort of thing yep. if the minute the patient leaves the 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 consultation, if there was some kind of setup either with a receptionist or a practice nurse to, to know oh, that person was prescribed a test, we need to make sure that they have it before they leave, that type of thing. I think there are other barriers, you know, the age old barriers that make it so hard for GPs these days, you know, they've got increasing workload, lack mm -hmm. of time, yep. education of the patient. So those other sort of bigger picture items to try and inform people better about the need for a chlamydia test but also to make it a bit easier for the GP to get that explain the informed consent. What's the prevalence at the moment? Is it still on the rise? Is it? Uh, the prevalence is probably about four to five percent in sexually mm -hmm. active young people so you know one in 20 will have it at any point in time and the greater the number of sex partners you have yep. the, the, the higher the prevalence is. That was the other thing I wanted to yeah. ask you. Is, is there a barrier in terms of partner tracking? Yeah now that does make it a bit difficult because yeah. um, partner notification is it's stressful for the patient the yeah. fear of having to tell their partners um, it can be time consuming for uh, the clinics and they might not always understand what's going on um, in Victoria now for example legislation has passed that now allows for doctors to provide a patient with patient delivered partner therapy the treatment for azithromycin for chlamydia. So doctors now in Victoria can give their patient a script yep. or to give their partner uh, treatment. So that's definitely improved. Now this legislation varies a little bit from state to state. As it was? Uh, yeah, <laughs> which does make it more complicated. Okay. Um, but yeah, partner notification can be a barrier. But Rick, I just want to say that chlamydia sure. still is, you know, it is, Chlamydia testing is one of the key preventive health activities for this age group. Yeah. And, you know, chlamydia will definitely cause pelvic inflammatory disease in a proportion of women. Yeah. So, you know, it is a, an issue. And so we still definitely need to keep talking about it and progress um, the guidelines and research in this area. Yes. Thank you for your time. No problems. Thank you very much. It was lovely. <laughs>